Welcome back folks. Today we're going to do something that we haven't done before on the channel. We're going to check out a few physical albums from my collection. I decided to call this new potential video series from the vault, but I leave it up to you viewers to judge whether you want to see more of this type of content or not. The idea behind From the Vault is to take three random albums from my collection and then we'll go through the artwork, the inner sleeve and the vinyl itself and I'll talk a little bit about each album. So that's the plan for this video series. So let me know if you like it or not by hitting that like button and all of that. And now it's time for us to check out three albums from the vault. Here we got a box of records, and I keep all my albums in these IKEA boxes. They are perfect for storing albums, but they are quite heavy when they are filled with records. But I found a box that I actually could carry without breaking my back. <laughs> so let's grab a record from here in the middle somewhere. And here we got Power Mad's Absolute Power. And what is this weird looking album you might wonder? Well, this is a thrash metal record with a kind of speed and power metal vibe to it. The American power metal vibe, that is. And these guys had some hype around them for a short while, because they were in a movie called Wild at Heart starring Nicolas Cage. And this album is excellent, and I urge every thrash metal fan to check it out. The artwork is a bit weird though, with the giant baby head and a field of soldiers underneath. I don't really get the symbolism here, but anyways, they could perhaps have found a better artwork for this album, because it's kind of hard to tell what type of music this is from just looking at the album art. The backside is also kind of basic. Uh, the song Slaughterhouse is amazing though, and it was featured in that David Lynch movie I just mentioned. Absolute Power corrupts absolutely, another brilliant song. And Nice Dreams is also amazing, but a bit more melodic. And this is a brilliant way to kick off the album. I can hardly think of any other albums with three better intro songs than this. BNR. I think of BNR Metal when I see that song. <laughs> that old metal website. You've probably seen it. The album was produced by Tim Bamba, and it was released on Reprise Records which was owned by Warner Music Group, so these guys got signed by a major label right away, which is kind of impressive. And here we got the vinyl. Side 2 looks kind of similar to side 1, quite colorful in comparison to the artwork. And we also got an inner sleeve here with lyrics. And I actually interviewed Jules Dubay, the band's vocalist and guitarist once, back in 2003 long before they reunited, and I can put a link to the interview down in the video description below if you guys want to check it out. And here we got the full band, Joel Dubay, Jeff Litke, Todd Haug and Adrian Liberty. A typical 80s thrash photo I would say, and we also got a big thank you list here with everyone's mother and agent on it it seems like. But perhaps more interesting is the big minus list. Power Mad doesn't like crack, anti-environmentalists, swaggered, I think he was a televangelist, is, is that how you say it, one of those TV preachers. Tipper Gorilla, which I think is Tipper Gore I guess, the lady behind the PMRC who tried to censor metal music back in the day. Anyhow, Absolute Power is a great record, so you really have to check it out if you're unfamiliar with it. Fans of bands like Metallica, Flotsam and Jetsam, Testament, Metal Church, Sanctuary and bands like that will certainly enjoy this one. So let's check out another album now from The Vault. And I think we're going to grab this one. It's a gatefold cover without a band logo or anything. But I guess that most of you recognize this one, especially if you're into more extreme metal because this is Possessed's Beyond the Gates. 
And this album came out in 1986, and it's the follow-up to their legendary Seven Churches record, which is often hailed as the first death metal album. Beyond the Gates is slightly thrashier than their debut, but it's still a very aggressive album of course. The absolutely amazing cover art here was created by Ed Repke, the same guy that made Megadeth's Peace Cells and Rust in Peace covers. And they also worked with countless other thrash bands as well. Here's the backside. The album was produced by Carl Kennedy, drummer of heavy metal band The Rods. And he was also in Man War for a short while. Carl is also a known thrash metal producer. And he has worked with bands like Anthrax, Overkill, Exciter and a few others. The Heretic, Tribulation, March to Die, Phantasm, No Will to Live, Beyond the Gates, The Beasts of the Apocalypse, Seance, Restless Dead and Dogfight are the songs on this album. And we also got Jeff Becerra on bass and vocals, Mike Suss on drums, Larry Lalonde on guitars, also known for being a member of Blind Illusion and Primus, and Mike Torao handles the other guitar. We also got a photo of the band here, and uh, let's check out the inner sleeve here as well. There's a lot of lyrics about Satan, evil and hell and stuff like that, so it's not for the faint of heart. And we also got a German address here, Frankfurt, which is kind of strange, since Possessed were an American band, but maybe this is the address to the label or a fan club or something like that. Whatever. And we also got the price tag here, it says possession, 25 Swedish crowns. Damn, the prices were amazing some 20 years ago. 25 crowns is like 2 or 3 US dollars. Not sure of how much this is valued at today, but it should be at least 10 times more than what I paid for it. And let's check out the vinyl. This one is an under one flag release but I think it was originally released on Combat Records, if I remember it correctly. And this is a great album and highly recommended for fans of both 80s death and thrash metal. So let's check out our third and final vinyl for the day. And this one is coming at you straight from the vault, of course. And we got something shiny here in the dark. It's Axe Witch and their second full length studio record, Visions of the Past. And this one is a bit more obscure and an album that you might not be familiar with unless you're really into some underground metal. Axe Witch is a Swedish band and this was their second full length studio record. And I kinda love the fantasy inspired artwork here. The backside is a bit bare boned, but it looks cool as well. This album is amazing and I think it's probably in my top 10 Swedish heavy metal albums of all time. Alongside bands like Candle Mass, Gotham City, Heavy Load and Bathory. But this is straight up classic heavy metal, kinda like Priest or Maiden and stuff like that. Even though Swedish bands had a much more melancholic sound to them. But this is straight up classic heavy metal, kinda like Priest or Maiden. And had this been released in the UK and been part of the new wave of British heavy metal, it would certainly have been considered to be a classic. The title track Visions of the Past is amazing, Stand Up is great too. And if you haven't heard this album or Power Mad and Possessed, I've made a playlist for you guys to check out, which I do of course recommend highly if you're unfamiliar with any of these three albums that I've talked about here today because I consider them all to be essential listenings. And this one was released on the Swedish label Fingerprint that signed a lot of the best heavy metal bands in Sweden back in the day before the label went bankrupt. And this album came out in 1984 and the cover was made by Orbit Reklam a very cool cover for being made by some advertising company. The muscular guy on the cover looks kind of like Conan the Barbarian or He-Man perhaps. And we also got a dancing lead and two cloaked characters and a dragon on the cover as well. A very fantasy inspired cover. On the sleeve we also got some band photos. 
We got Mickey and Mange on guitars, Valentoft on vocals, Matte on drums and Tommy on bass. A very competent band. And we got your typical Edis band photo and some info here as well. This album was recorded during the summer of 1984. And it's kind of sad that albums like this has been so forgotten over the years. Like all Swedish bands at the time, they were in the shadows of Europe that were getting international fame at this point. But for me this is better than whatever Europe were doing, or especially the direction that they were heading in. Sure, Axwitch also wandered down a softer route on their next record like so many other bands did around 1985, but there's nothing soft or weak about visions of the past. They also had a fan club with contact information to their bassist Magnus Jarl. I strongly doubt that it's still up and running, even if the band released a new album in 2021, their first since 1985's Hooked on High Heels. And there is a long thank you list here where they thank some metal magazines that probably reviewed their work back in the day. Swedish heavy metal bands Torch and Heavy Load are also on their thank list. The band urges you to play loud and don't mind your neighbors, buy them a copy too. Axwitch used Tokai guitars and basses, not sure if they are still around though. Maybe they are, I have no clue. And that fingerprint logo just makes me warm and fuzzy on the inside. What an amazing label that was. Or at least before they got money issues and everything crumbled. Visions of the past is an essential listen. So what are you waiting for? Check out the Spotify link listed down below. And I'm also curious about your opinions here. Have you heard all three albums? Power Man's Absolute Power, Possessed's Beyond the Gates and the X-Witch Visions of the Past. So feel free to share your thoughts on these three albums down in the comment section below. And I'm also curious to hear your opinions on the first episode of From the Vault. Did you like it? Do you want me to do more of this? Or was this too nerdy for you? Feel free to share your thoughts down below. And if you enjoyed this video and want me to continue bringing you some high quality metal, then I suggest that you become a patron. It's from $3 per month and you get an invite to my Discord server. And of course your name in my videos, like the Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And we got some real legends on this list, so thank you guys for your support. And if you enjoyed the video then make sure to smash that like button as well and subscribe. Because that makes a big difference for the channel, so keep smashing that like button. And you can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook and Spotify. So check all the links listed down below. And that's all for now, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.